Welcome to this Smart Industry Talk on, on Data. In this talk, or actually this series of five talks, uh, or planned five talks, we'll talk about uh, data uh, ecosystems uh, and, uh, and all the legal aspects on it. We'll talk about the technical solutions which are now in development. Then we go into, uh, once you do have the data, how to visualize it, how to use it, how to do the analysis on it, and ultimately how to use it in an AI type of uh, application. In this first talk, the focus will be on the data ecosystems and in actually the introduction uh, video talk, I explained more about smart industry, that it is really the combination of industry 4.0 and smart services servitization. And also that called the acceleration of digitalization of industry. Also the importance of data is growing. What you'd see back really in the business side is that uh, the data is not only being used for traceability, uh, legal sometimes, but also otherwise uh, on, uh, on the design of a product. More and more these days also on the manufacturing of each individual product. But this, all this servitization, it's also going to be uh, the, the whole uh, usage of the product uh, the whole lifetime. In the two slides below, you see a little bit about this change of uh, owning a product into uh, the servitization trend in the other slide explained in the introduction uh, video uh, really about the digital twin. The question is, where do you store that data? And that's where at this moment you see a lot of well, in-company databases maybe, where a little bit of the data could be shared or could be uh, public uh, or shared with the customers. But what we do see is a lot of these cloud platforms at this moment. And there's a risk. There's a risk that these cloud platform performance really get all the information uh, and hardly share it back to you. Uh, one example is, for example, Uber or Airbnb, who, owns, who don't own any manufacturing equipment, or in their case, uh, cars or uh, hotel rooms, but make most of the profit out of it. And that's a risk in manufacturing as well. Now, there are solutions for it in which you really start uh, having a multi-sided market model. It's sometimes called an alliance model, in which you have a share, a fair share of the data when you start using it, but where you also get the data back from others and in total can do more than the current situation that you only have your own in-house database. I'll give an example of it. The example is really in GSM, which already in the 90s was developed. In this particular case, your mobile operator also has the charging information and your billing information. That's not going to be shared with other operators. But your mobile device can be roaming to another environment where only the, your, your mobile telephony number and your IME, your device number is used. And once you use it in the other operator environment, he shares the amount of minutes you have been phoning or data you have been used and send it back to your home operator, as they it's called it. And he can send the bill to you. <clears throat> so what is really happening there is that they exchange data. Of course, there is some technological things like uh, this, the standards for mobile devices and the numbering. But there is also this legal contract uh, between all the operators. And this is working fine. This is really a lines model if it's, uh, there is a fair share of or fair usage and where each operator can do more business by roaming than what they ever could do before if they would only operate uh, inside their own uh, area. So these data platforms, not only for GSM, but also for other environments in which you have a multi-sided market is, is a new development. Um, it's not necessary to share all your data. It's only necessary to define the kind of data you would like to exchange with others in a controlled way. In a controlled way, I mean a more sovereignty way that you not only share the data, but you remain the owner of it. And you can decide what others are allowed to do it by using these international standards as well as the, the contracts. Now there is an issue with it. And in particular in IoT data. IoT data is namely not copyright protected. It involves no lab uh, creative labor, and therefore anyone who gets access to your IG data can do whatever they want with the data. So is the data owned by you? Well, maybe it's owned by you, but you don't cannot you cannot control it because others, others can do a lot with it. It's a little bit the same with um, a situation where Tesla is selling your car, but in the meantime, monitors the usage of your car. Um, of course, there is something like a contract, which you probably didn't realize when you signed uh, the purchasing contract, but they can monitor your car and they can even block the users of your car. And if they do have access to your uh, device without you knowing it, uh, a hacker could do it as well. So 
There is some discussion ongoing now, what is sometimes called by Tubov, the surveillance capitalism. At this moment, there is so much monitoring of what you are doing uh, that, that you might ask uh, what is happening and, and do we really want to have something like that? So in Europe, at least, they created this uh, GDPR, uh, sovereignty of your uh, privacy data. That means that you not only own the data, but you can also decide what others are allowed to do with your data. And the question is, how can we do that in, uh, with IT data? How are you going to share it? If you now put it on the cloud, others can start misusing it. There are some discussions ongoing or already existing data bank uh, laws in which you, once you do collect IoT type of data with the purpose of storing it in a database, law, it's pretty, pretty complicated. It's, it's not easy to solve. So in one of the smart industry field labs with milk cows, we already encountered the problem. Is the robot, the milk cow robot owner uh, or vendor, is he uh, owning the data or is the farmer owning the data of the cow? So there we created the contract. The problem now with the contract is that for every different application, you, you have to go back to lawyers and, and set up a contract, and which is pretty costly. So there is some question, can't we create a more generic construct such that for everyone it is clear, like for example, copyright data, when and how you're able, uh, allowed to use it. So my statement is a little bit that we need something like, uh, I once called it the European Data Sovereignty Act that caused a lot of discussions, uh, but it is a little bit similar to the GDPR. Now the GDPR took about 10 years uh, to develop it, a lot of discussions, and even today it's a complicated thing. So at the moment I'm stating that we need to have something for IoT data as well. It's just starting a discussion all over again. So my statement now is a little bit an extremist view, but I want to create a discussion on it. And the discussion is the following, that in my statement, just like privacy data is, is data owned by a natural per a person, that my statement that a user who triggers software or a device to start doing something, the input, is also the owner of the output and therefore gets data sovereignty rights. That means that, that he can determine what others are allowed to do with it. It might mean that it is not the owner of the product, it's the user of the product. It's not the software provider uh, who, who determines it and, and owns it. So this is still a concept that needs to develop further um, because there is also some consequences. If you would have something like that, and if someone else is sneaky way or another way trying to get access to your data, you can still determine uh, what he or she is allowed to do. But it also implies that they have to inform you that you are doing it. In the example, in the, in the upper part of it, you see, for example, that if I start my computer in no time, there are a lot of processes ongoing communicating with the rest of the world where I cannot trace back anymore what's happening there. It's just ridiculous what is happening already. This is only the last five uh, to 10 years. And that was the surveillance capitalism thing. Can you imagine that once your equipment is up and running, that you neither don't know what is happening and who else is looking into your equipment and can even control it? For example, John Deere or Tesla are examples that they sell you a tractor, but they license the use of it, uh, of the software, and they could even block you using your equipment. Um, and that's in this particular case. In, 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 and on, the, on the bottom part, hardware sold separately, and you get a license for the software. Now, what happens if the vendor of the hardware broke, goes broke, but has separated his software, uh, software in a different company, which continues and which can block the usage of it? You thought you owned the hardware, but you cannot use it anymore. Now, with software, there are some developments with uh, open systems, and I included this one on it. Uh, even there, it took about uh, 10 years on, uh, on open systems and all the legal contracts. So that's a little bit my statement in the conclusion is that data is going to power your business more and more in the next coming uh, well, a year's decade. Um, but you want to avoid that, that the situation that only someone owns all the manufacturing equipment uh, and can generate the value and, and just let you do all the work, but you cannot run anything on it. Now with data, it, it, with all these cloud systems, we are running that risk at this moment. So we do need different solutions for, for cloud storage uh, with all the legal contracts in it, so that you can get a fair usage of it and can do more business with your data and share it with others. But next to the technical aspects, 
next slide set, a uh, next, next uh, YouTube video. There are all these legal aspects um, and those are complex. Uh, it might require new concepts. It might even require the interpretation of existing legal concepts. But this is going to be a discussion in the next five to 10 years.